Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. Very excited to introduce to you my next two guests. I have a Tony Gerber to my far right, and then to my immediate right, we have a Max Pozdorovkin. Yes, well very good. And uh, we were talking about uh, the notorious Mr. Boot. This is in the World Documentary Competition category. You guys, welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you, you for being here in Park City, for being part of Sundance. I'm really looking forward to our discussion. How are you guys this morning? We're thrilled well, to be here. Great, doing yeah. very well. So first off, uh, let, let's kind of set the stage here. This is a, a quite the documentary. That your subject matter is is uh, an individual who is uh, quite interesting to say the least. Uh, let's set the stage for our audience. Uh, let us know really what we're looking at here with this documentary. What's it all about? Victor Boot is the world's most famous arms dealer. I mean, that by reputation. So this is a guy about whom very little is, is known in terms of truth, in terms of accuracy, right? Mm -hmm. So there's this huge mythology around this guy. Most people know him as the uh, real life inspiration for the Nicolas Cage character in Lord of War. Incredible. So Max and I both we're drawn to the subject because of its enormity, right? And, and as we began to delve into, into the man, the story of his life, and discovered that he had this treasure trove of home movies that he had been documenting, meticulously documenting his life, um, it provided us with his window on, on a, a, a completely, uh, a, completely um, a, a, a whole nother portrait of this individual mm -hmm. um, from what is like popular, popularly... Um, um, so kind of like the behind the scenes of what people really could don't say that. know yeah. about. That's right. That's incredible. Wow. Yeah. So, so Max, kind of share with us, what was the investigation process like in interviewing him and talking with him and going through uh, the, these documents and, and footage? What, how well, I mean, did the you get You know, but yeah, the big reveal was really, you know, we, when uh, Victor was extradited from Thailand and, and put on trial in the U.S., we would go and visit him and speak to him. And the first time, and he was being held in solitary confinement for about 15 months when we started to go see him. And we bring him in, and he's shackled eight different ways. And then you start speaking to him, and on this other side come out, comes out. He's this hippie. He speaks 13 languages. He's very new age in certain ways. But then, and so certain things weren't lining up between the mythology and between sort of his reputation and then what we started seeing when we would watch these home movies of his hundreds of hours that he recorded over 20 years and so you know in our film it's really a 25-year portrait of this life recorded by himself by the man himself how did you guys get access to him in the first place it was gradually uh, you know we'd been interested in him for a while and when he was extradited just started started filming and then became um, did some work with his wife wrote about um, wrote an article about her and then kind of started g gaining their trust. And because his reputation had been so bad to begin with, I think they didn't expect the film to necessarily be in defense of him, but they thought it would be an honest, an attempt to actually make something honest about him rather than just sort of scapegoat him or. So like you just said, this film is indeed, it gives a more honest portrayal of who he really is. is yeah, much saying? more nuanced, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, I think that <clears throat> they'd been so burned by media exposure, and and not very much positive had ever come out of it. You know, um, when 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 he sort of um, became this, uh, you know, trophy, or you know, was sort of this the international bogeyman for for a lot of a lot of uh, the crimes of of the arms trade, right? Um, um, it, it initially, he thought he could defend himself, and so he went very, very public. He did a, a, a cover story for the New York Times Magazine. Uh, he did a lot of radio interviews, and he sort of went very, very public because, you know, there's there's major misconceptions about the arms industry, uh, on large, and and one of them being that it's illegal. That if you're an arms dealer, you're breaking laws, and that's just not the truth, you know. And so. Um, what what effectively happened for him when he started to defend himself is is his his negative reputation grew, particularly in the West because everyone loves a good story, right? And so this guy is like the Kaiser Sose of of arms dealers, right? And for us to find that that the reality is so much deeper and so much more nuanced and interesting was really a journey for both of us. Mm -hmm. Max Max is Russian. I'm from America, so that also gave us this opportunity to um, to earn their trust. You know, because the story is also told from the point of view of law enforcement, right? So we, we also had access to the US DEA, who eventually um, brought, him, brought him in, you know, were involved in the takedown. Mm -hmm. So um, 
this film is, you know, not just a portrait of the man's life. It's also a much larger story, and it's a it's a rip roaring tale. Oh, incredible! <laughs> wow. As usual, we wish we had more time to go into it. Last question before we show the clip. Uh, tell me a little bit, Max. What was your greatest surprise coming out of, of preparing and and filming and documenting his his life and this experience? Well, there's so many. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think it, when we first. Um, when we first got a hold and started watching the, uh, his fi his films and the videos that he was making, one of the most interesting that co that comes out, that came out of him was that he really saw himself as a documentary filmmaker. Mm -hmm. That he was working in the cargo business and the transport business, but what he was really, but then throughout the film, so in many ways our film is about a film about a film. It's about the film that Victor Boot was making of his life. And I thought that that, and that was such an interesting angle because it reveals the arms industry in this completely different light, and it puts on, and it questions all these assumptions that we have about it. In other words, if a person is working in that industry, why would they be filming all the time? Mm -hmm. And so, kind of working within that and using his home movies to deconstruct kind of a myth that had formed around him. Was, mm -hmm. What we tried to do, and you sort of will see this in the clip, probably. Wow, incredible. We're going to go ahead and show that now. Here it is, the notorious Mr. Buck. Share with us what we just saw there before we talk about the screenings and such. Sure. Well, you know, that's, that was uh, a clip from early on in the movie, and that clip tries to summarize a lot of the mythology that ha that exists around this man. So, world's greatest, uh, world's biggest arms dealer, you know, bargaining chip for Edward Snowden, all wow. these sorts of things. And then once the film starts, we actually get into his his real life story. All right, Tony, let's talk about screenings. Yeah, we have uh, two more screenings. We have a screening on Wednesday at the Temple Theater at 9 a.m. And the Thursday we're at the Egyptian, the venerable Egyptian theater at um, I think one o'clock. Wednesday okay. and Thursday this week. Very good, and I and I do. Before we go to commercial, I know we have just a bit of extra time now. But I, what do you guys hope people get out of this film? Obviously, your uh, big story, and like you mentioned, Edward Snowden, uh, all these things going on internationally and such. Why is it so important for people to be aware of what's happening here and uh, the piece, uh, the the role that this man plays? Yeah, I think it's important that people ask questions that we don't just sort of accept labels and and the notion of good and evil I don't think good and evil exists anymore in our world I think that we're all about shades of gray and this is very much a story of you know shades of gray and folks need to ask questions right. and um, it's also uh, you know sort of a sopranos story it really is the, the tale of a man's life you know so you have you have crime and you have family life uh, which is a pretty interesting cocktail Wow. All right, you guys. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here this, this morning. Thank you. Tony and Max with The Notorious Mr. Bout. We'll be right back after this commercial break. When we do, we have Lowdown coming up next.